thanks a lot. Okay, so I am uh, talking about linear colliders, um, which is half of my occupation. Um, and I was also asked to uh, include uh, the ILC. Uh, so this is the, the PDF, or can, can I do yeah. the PowerPoint? Can, can I use the PowerPoint one? Sorry. It should be the, uh, the PowerPoint. Just, uh, the PDF the last session. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. there are some boxes which were, uh, okay, if you launch it again, uh, I think we, we can muddle through with that. Um, okay, good. So, so these are the parameters uh, for the two projects. Uh, I assume you are aware that there is the International Linear Collider where Japan is considering to host it, um, which initially was planned for 500 GV, and now recently they actually decided to uh, go for a 250 GV, mainly for cost reasons, I come back to that, which actually was quite well received by politicians, Japanese politicians, and they gave some presentation in Strasbourg last year, and uh, they seemed to, to like that a lot. And then CLIC, which would actually start at 380 GV, because this is considered the optimum energy for the first stage, uh, doing top and uh, Higgs physics at the same time, and then could go up to 3 TV. Uh, luminosities are in the uh, 10 to the 30, uh, uh, 4 region, going up to uh, six times that. Oops, where do I have it up there? Sorry, okay. So the ISC, um, here you see the overview. Uh, okay. Um, basically, the machine uh, would be something like 20 kilometers long, 250 GV center of mass, luminosity 1.35, very precise. 10 to 34, and the challenges are mainly in the cost, which is in the Linux, so that's the large cost driver, and then certainly in the uh, getting the nano beams to, to get to the high luminosity. Um, compared to the uh, TDR, which was uh, released in 2013, actually early 2013, some uh, changes have been uh, uh, applied. So one is actually that after uh, that report, there was a site a specific study, which in the moment is focusing on a site which is in the north of Japan, here. And uh, because, like, you need to find stable ground, a uh, long enough uh, 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 block of uh, a rock, so sort of a solid rock. And um, in addition, actually, the XFL in Hamburg, which is like a 10% prototype, has been constructed and is now uh, operating. Um, and then on top, there is the discussion to go down in energy to 250 GV, mainly as a cost reduction measure because before it was, uh, that the cost of the project was something like 8 billion US dollars of 2012, the, the IC unit, and with the new design, uh, it's assumed that this would go down to something like 5 billion, which would be more appropriate for a budget. And there were a number of uh, options considered. So for the European XFL, you're all well aware of that, that uh, the beam has started last year. And the machine is operating with 800 cavities, so it's a pretty high number. Uh, it's very similar uh, compared to the ILC, and basically all of the RF is working beautifully. I can show here, this is the performance of the superconducting cavities. Um, now the goal uh, they had in terms of uh, gradient in the uh, XFL is only 24 megavolts per meter, so that was much more conservative than what would be required for the uh, I see, which is 31.5 megavolts per meter active, I mean, really achieved gradient. But the achieved gradient in the uh, XFL is actually very close to 30 megavolts per meter, even if that wasn't part of the, uh, the effort or the design effort. So it's already very close to uh, what will be needed uh, for the ILC. And um, then there is actually some further improvement which hasn't been used for the, uh, for the XFL yet, which is that people in the past did try to improve the cavities by uh, doping them with uh, nitrogen, which actually get, gives you better performance at lower fields. So you get higher Qs, you get less losses, they become even better conductors. But now there is a new method, which is nitrogen infusion, where you actually uh, fill the cavity with the nitrogen, and then you let it at low temperature sit for uh, several hours. And that seems to push the gradient uh, with the high quality factor even higher. So that is assumed to be able to push the gradient further uh, beyond the goal uh, that is needed for the IC. Other cost reduction issues were uh, considered. They all come out to be in the percent range. So the total cost reduction that can be achieved with the design is minor. It's a few percent. So that's why then the energy was changed, because that's a dramatic uh, change. 35% of the cost reduction come from there, out of 40%, and 5% from the other parts. There is a worldwide uh, 
collaboration on the superconducting uh, RF uh, development. And um, as you can see, this involves all areas. Um, okay, basically all countries, and that's a nice example of an international collaboration. So, in general, the IOC parameters are demonstrated here. You see all of the RF parameters, the beam quality. There is a test facility actually with the squeezing of the beam to achieve the very small spot sizes tested at uh, KK. Uh, the goal there is 37 nanometer, and so this is like a 10% difference. And you see all of these parameters are achieved. So basically, the, mature, uh, the, the project is mature. Here now, there would have been a flying inbox, so sorry for that. Um, so basically, what the project is doing, it's waiting for a political decision. Everything is ready. It's up to the politicians to throw out the money and go ahead. And in a moment, everybody is waiting uh, for the Japanese to actually propose that and to go into negotiations with other countries. Uh, this here is just to show you a nicer view of the, the location where the project would go. Actually, there is a second site which uh, was considered in the south of Japan, which may come up again. Okay, now here I have a bit of a problem because of the PDF instead of the PowerPoint. Um, I will now go to the click scheme, which is explore, uh, explored as a project for CERN, something located at CERN. Um, that would be, uh, and the focus of click was actually on the 3 TV collider design, so to go really to high uh, E plus and minus energies. Um, in order to achieve that, Superconducting technology is excluded because it's very difficult to get these high grains with superconducting cavities. They're inherently limited because of the superconductivity breaking down at high gradients. And therefore, one needed to go to normal conducting acceleration. Now, that requires, on the other hand, that you have a very short intense beam pulse. And that requires that you have a power source that can provide very high power in a short uh, moment. So that's uh, one of the main difficulties. So here you would have seen the click collider, it's also a linear collider with the two main Linux pointing at each other being, being focused there. And the trick in order to produce these high peak powers is actually not to use conventional technologies like klystrons, but rather to produce a very long uh, pulse drive beam, which uh, is produced over something like 150 microseconds. And then you chop this drive beam into short chunks, you merge the pulses of the drive beam. By that, you get to a very high intensity uh, beam. And then you use that beam. You send it into the main Linux. You use that, uh, sending it through some structures to extract power from that RF power, which you then feed into the accelerating structures, as you can see here. And so you turn uh, something like a 100 ampere drive beam. You take its power, and you accelerate something like a bit more than one amp of main beam uh, with a very high gradient, in this case, of uh, 100 uh, megavolts per meter. Okay, so now while the goal is to go to very high energy, certainly there's lots of physics that's important and interesting at lower energy. So what we did do in the last few years is to develop a staged approach because you don't want to build your full machine and then operate at a very low energy initially. That's a waste of uh, money and uh, time. So, so you would rather start with a short machine, and uh, it's shown here, which would go to 380 GV, uh, consists of four sectors of the drive beam acceleration. And it would run at um, the top uh, threshold, at 350, where actually the integrated luminosity needed is not so huge. So it would scan over the top threshold. And then it would sit somewhat above the top threshold in order to produce lots of tops to measure the, the back-forward asymmetry. And also to do with the Higgs physics, because our physics experts tells us it's easier to do and better to do uh, the Higgs physics at 380 than it is at 250, because you can better distinguish the jets and you get actually better measurements. So, so that was a real optimization done for that. Okay, so, so this would be the first stage. And after that, you would then just extend the Linux going up to, say, one and a half TV, or finally to three TV, all of this fitting into the Geneva area. You, you see the LHC here. This would be the first energy stage of click, and then you would see how it evolves along the lake, you try to not go under the lake, uh, along the Jura Mountains, in case you're in plan. The whole program could be technically finished in 22 years. Now there will be questions of budgets and so on, but uh, at least that's the plan. And the integrated luminosities you can see here. Certainly, if you would stretch the program, the integrated luminosities would go up. OK. I should mention that all of this can still be powered with the same drive beam complex in the center up to, uh, say, 1.5 TV. And then at that moment, you would build a second uh, drive beam complex in the center to feed uh, one to feed one Linux, the other one to feed the other Linux. 
Um, in order to test this scheme, there has been a test facility at CERN, which was in the building of the old lab pre-injector. You can see that here. And um, in that test facility, actually, the whole production of the drive beam, it's uh, chopping it into pieces, merging them, producing power, has been tested extensively. And uh, that program has been very successful. You can see that here. This shows you, as an example, how the power of the, how the uh, current of the drive beam is building up in uh, the combiner ring. And then uh, this shows you the quality of the beam, in this case, the arrival time of this drive beam, because it needs to be stable in time. And this here then shows you actually how this has been used to accelerate the beam. So the beam uh, without uh, the drive beam, the, the main beam was here at about 200 MeV and then was accelerated uh, with uh, something up to 150 megavolts per meter. So with all of that, we are sure that this uh, scheme works. And so this test facility now has been stopped and instead a new test facility using many of the components is built in order, or now already operational, to actually do tests of the main beam and uh, of, uh, for example, instrumentation, test of uh, components uh, at high quality. The other main ingredients, except for producing the power, are the accelerating structures. And so there is the question, can you achieve the gradient? Because what happens if you have too much gradient in such a structure, they will spark, and then uh, that will uh, give you a limitation uh, of the gradient. And so here you can see actually how uh, the performance of these structures has been measured. Uh, basically, all of the structures have to be extrapolated to this line. This is the breakdown rate that we would have uh, for, uh, uh, that we can allow for, for the 3 TV machine. And you see that almost all of the structures nicely achieve the gradient that we need. So the structures are now well understood. And so the focus of the technology development now is to make the structures cheaper because you want to reduce the cost. Just This is, after all, the cost driver of the machine. This is the most uh, expensive component. And also to make this technology something that is used in industry because at 12 gigahertz, that is still uh, something new. And so that actually, fortunately, uh, will be used in a different number of projects, light sources and other projects uh, like Spark uh, in uh, Frascati. Uh, so, so it will actually be used for further applications. In that frame, since uh, most applications cannot use the drive beam concept because it sort of is a steep initial investment, Actually, also the use of klystrons is uh, investigated further, and the development of klystrons at that frequency has been driven forward. So now you can actually buy them from vendors commercially, and we hope that this will improve a lot in the, in the future. And so uh, for the first energy stage of Click, we also develop an alternative where we would use klystrons instead of the drive beam. That is okay for the first stage, but then it would become more expensive as we go to higher energy, so it's only an alternative for the first stage. Um, there are many other technologies that are being developed. One is uh, more efficient klystrons. That's actually something which the FCC took over, this uh, development, because uh, klystrons are limited to something like 60 to 70% efficiency, and the goal is to go to close to 90%, so that would be very good. Industry doesn't seem to push that development very much on its own, so we are doing that. Then the use of permanent magnets to reduce the power consumption of the machine. So like the biggest probably biggest uh, permanent magnet has been assembled in the UK, uh, which then would be a prototype for a bending magnet uh, for the drive beam. And uh, also we try to improve the main Linux module for cost, just because that's the main cost driver. Just uh, on the experimental uh, conditions, I will not say very much. They have been studied in detail for the 3 TV, for the 380 GV, and they are perfectly fine, so the background rates are low enough, the luminosity spectrum is well under control. It can be used in the reconstruction. This has been studied uh, in great detail. One of the things we, which is like a difference, at least the FCC EE, is that our detector people told us very much that we should try to move the final focusing magnets, which were at four meter from the interaction point, so sitting inside of the detector to move them out. And so we made a big effort to move them to six meter away from the interaction point, which in our case means the detector fits between the focusing magnets. And that works, and that was a big effort to, to make the design of the optics, but uh, it worked beautifully um, with all this effort. So uh, I'm not sure if this will not come up for other uh, E plus and minus colliders again. Um, okay, cost and power. So the power consumption for the 380 GV machine is something like 250 megawatts estimated, but we are sure this will be brought down to below 200. We actually already reduced it by a significant amount because there were some overheads, but not necessary. The cost estimate 
from the rebase lining, so, so from the first iteration, was 6.7 billion uh, Swiss francs. Now also that will be reduced to below 6 billion. So then it's roughly comparable to the LHC with some inflation and maybe a little bit of extra. So, so it is something that CERN could handle. Um, in this step, but we already also saved quite some money. So, so we, like the injectors, at the 3 TV design, the injectors were a small part of the cost. But actually, if you look then at the 380 GV machine, it's the, the same absolute, but much more relative cost. So there we saved like almost half of the cost. So that was a nice saving. And so, so we will bring it to something that's affordable in terms of power and in terms of energy. And you see actually this here is the certain energy consumption per year, and you see the first stage will stay below that, and then we would slightly exceed it, so, so we certainly try to improve also the energy consumption up there. But the site, it nicely fits along the Jura, so you avoid the bad rock under the Jura and the lake, and you, you can go beautifully here, and uh, this uh, central site would be in Prefsin, and the whole central complex, including the drive-thru production, would all be on certain property right now. So, so it fits, uh, it has been designed exactly for that, so, so no problem in this. Up to the 3 TV, and then it starts to be a little murky, and then we have to go uh, under here, which, I mean, it probably can be done, uh, and we, we go into some vineyards over there, which may create some issues, but 50, I mean, 50 kilometers is sort of fine, let me know. Um, the technology, as I said, is used for other purposes. It already, um, for example, uh, there is a Swiss FL, which is using 6 gigahertz normal conducting uh, technology. And now there's an EU co-funded activity, which is um, using the click technology and seeing how that can be used for FL. So the idea is that a number of institutes, here you can see all the partners all over Europe, well, including Australia, China, and uh, Turkey, for example, uh, to make a common CDR which you can then use, and your home institute can have a normal conducting FL based on that, which is not quite as performant as the superconducting one in Hamburg, but way cheaper. So it's an order of magnitude maybe in cost. And uh, so, so that is quite interesting. And that is currently promoting and distributing the technology and helps us to develop the industrial base for the novel technology. For the roadmap, the goal is by the end of this year to have the input for the European strategy ready, because the European strategy after all, asked us to provide that, so, so that's what we are doing. And that will be in the form of a project implementation plan. So it's like a short update on what the 380 GV machine looks like as compared to the 3 TV machine, because we have to describe that, and then a plan of how to, to go from there. And um, so, so this is here the project uh, uh, development phase. Now we hope that there is some decision by the European strategy in whichever form that will happen. And then, uh, depending on that outcome, one could actually go into the direct preparation phase uh, immediately after, if they can make their mind up. And then it would take like five years or so to prepare actually the start of the project, because you, you have to get all of the people, the technical experts in, you have, you have to train many more people, you have to extend that. Um, and then construction could start, and so you could dream of having the first beams in 2035 nicely when the high luminosity LHC is switched off. Okay, so that's the plan. Uh, I should mention, just for your curiosity, because I saw that there was plasma acceleration somewhere in the CEPC, that one of the things we are also certainly looking into, since this is going to very high energies, it's the question of, can novel technologies like plasma acceleration be used in the long run in linear colliders? Now, some people are very optimistic and say, ah, oh, this is the next, already for the next stage. I think this is not true. But in the long run, this could actually become uh, useful because the gradients you can get, I mean, the highest gradient ever obtained was 50 gigawatts per, uh, per meter, and uh, something like a few uh, gigawatts per meter are more routinely achieved. So it's an interesting technology, but it will need many years to develop. So what we started doing is trying to understand which limitations that will put on the design so that it can be integrated later once it becomes available, if it becomes available. And that's certainly useful because you, you want to have a road to the future beyond uh, even the 3 TV. Up to 3 TV, I feel that probably conventional technology is better. Let's see. Uh, and the idea would be just you have like these plasma cells in a row and you would x-ray the beam But that. Uh, okay. I guess you're all familiar with how that works. So in conclusion, I think there is very important progress towards the European strategy. For the IC, with the European XFL, 
and the focus on cost reduction and the scope reduction, everything is put in place to have a political decision in Japan, and we are now waiting for that. I mean, there's nothing we really can do, just see what, what they do. Um, for click, uh, normal conducting FALs are prototypes, so that becomes a quite mature technology. The Swiss FAL, they, they did do wonderful precision things. I mean, we were quite impressed to see them. Okay, it's like a Swiss, they, they like to do things really properly. Um, so, so sometimes they are even more demanding than us uh, for, for the big collider. Uh, we have the optimized uh, 380 GB stage, which we try to further optimize for cost to, to get into the system. Uh, and then certainly we have a plan of how to extend to further stages and we try to optimize this. So we will have the implementation plan by the end of the year and then let's see what the European strategy makes out of all of this. Okay. Thanks for this uh, nice review. Questions? Ah, yeah. oh, thank you. I wonder uh, if you feel confident that uh, if uh, the project was, uh, say, approved soon, uh, that there is uh, no critical R&D that still has uh, to be completed uh, to feel uh, confident that this machine can be built. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for both of them? No, for, for the, for the click. Uh, for for click. Because uh, oh, yeah. uh, after um, all, for the ILC, uh, I think yeah. that uh, we have already demonstrations in yes. available. No, but we have demonstrations for all of the critical components. So the, I mean, ultimately, in terms of energy, everything is reasonably straightforward. You need to have a few structures that make the gradient. You need to be able to understand that they are reproducible. So that's where we are. So we will get the, the energy. For the drive beam, the test has been done. I mean, the installation set of three was worth maybe 100 million. So this is something that really produced the drive beam. And the quality of the beam was what we needed. In spite of the fact that many of the drivers of the quality, like, for example, the, the, the arrival time, the, the, the phase jitter of the drive beam, it's critical to get the proper energy because a phase stretcher is the same all along your uh, main Linux. Now, we, we had specifications where people were quite worried. Then we tried with the equipment which we happened to have because it was there for lab. It wasn't designed to be particularly stable and we achieved what we needed. So, I'm totally confident that we can do better than that by an order of magnitude and the XFL in Hamburg actually does do phase stabilities an order of magnitude better than what we need and then uh, what we, we achieved in that. So I think their drive beam, everything is fine. And then other challenges are the alignment of the components, but there has been a program which exactly focused, uh, I, I didn't have time to really go into that maybe, uh, um, which focused on proving that we get the alignment uh, accuracy that we need. It's based on the wire system similar to the one used for the LHC insertions for the straight insertions and that works uh, like a charm so, so uh, we, we achieved what we needed which is of the order of 10 micrometer alignment so an order of magnitude better than you would conventionally do and then for the other things you need to keep your components stable and so all of the magnets will be put on uh, piezo movers and will be equipped with sensors that sense the motion of them so, so they, because the problem is the natural ground motion could move them too much now, actually, I, I should be a little careful there. If we use the lap tunnel as a model, we would not need stabilization. The lap tunnel is extremely quiet and everything would be fine. So what we did there is develop something in case the ground motion is more than we see in the lap tunnel. But f even for that, there is demonstration of the stabilization technology that is needed. And actually, things were kept stable exactly as uh, performed. So the, the main thing which, now, if you would get the money, we couldn't just go to industry and buy things right away. It would need these five years where you then go from having the proof of principle and having the demonstration to making that something really cheap that industry can mass produce at a high cost. And this is in part ongoing now, but um, this is something that would take a little longer. But I think there is no major risk left. So, yes, I'm confident. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Other questions?
Okay, if not, I will take mine for the coffee break and uh, let's close the session. Let's uh, thank the speaker again.